Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today we do have a podcast full with currently exploited zero days and emergency patches, but I decided to first talk about something very regular, and that's today's diary by Brad about a quackbot if infection, because with all the zero days, this is probably the most likely mode how your network will get compromised, and that's the good old user clicking on an attachment, running a macro, and triggering Quackbot. What Brad was looking here in particular was, what if the system that's infected is connected to an active directory domain? And that's something that has really been shown up more and more lately, where malware behaves different in these sort of more corporate environments. And yet again, Brad saw Cobalt Strike being installed for follow-up activity. If you're interested in the indicators of compromise and to walk through the traffic yourself, Brad, as usual, has uh, the packet captures for you. Well, but let's say that uh, you don't trust the cloud, you want full control over your email in order to prevent uh, attachments like this from being received by your users, then you may still be running your own exchange server. And this is where probably the biggest story for today comes in, and that's Microsoft releasing a special update for exchange after also stating that these vulnerabilities have already been actively exploited by what Microsoft calls the Hafnium Group and currently associated with the Chinese government. Now, this has been exploited only against a very limited number of targets, according to Microsoft, and Microsoft's blog post has additional details about the particular vulnerability and how this particular group exploited it and used it to install web shells. Key in order to exploit these vulnerabilities is that the attacker has access to port 443, so HTTPS on the exchange server. If your exchange server is protected by a VPN or the like, then it's less likely going to get exploited. The update released today does fix a total of seven different vulnerabilities, four of which were exploited by this particular threat act. And the four vulnerabilities were used kind of in sequence in order to gain full access. The first vulnerability, CVE 2020, 26855 is a server-side request forgery vulnerability. This allows the attacker to essentially trick the exchange server to send requests to itself and with that to authenticate as the exchange server. The second uh, CVE 2021-26857 is a deserialization vulnerability and uh, it then allows execution of code as a system. Next, CVE 2021-26858 is a post-authentication arbitrary file write vulnerability that can then be used uh, to upload uh, the web shell, for example. And there is a second uh, vulnerability, CVE 2021-27065, that's also a post-authentication arbitrary file write vulnerability. The patches released today by Microsoft uh, require that you have an up-to-date system. Of course, uh, next week we'll have our patch Tuesday. Maybe we'll get sort of the cumulative updates, uh, roll-up updates or such uh, that include uh, this patch as well as others. Activity commonly seen by this uh, threat group in the attacks that Microsoft has observed were installing a web shell, also dumping the LSAS process memory, and then exfiltrating it as well as exporting mailbox data after adding an exchange PowerShell snap-in if that uh, wasn't there already. 
So if you're running Exchange, then definitely first start by reading actually everything that Microsoft wrote about it. Double check that you're not already compromised using the in the case of compromise that uh, Microsoft uh, published and then definitely update your servers uh, today at the very least by the end of the week. And this is certainly one of those cases where it's worth it even living without email for an hour or so if that's what it takes uh, to update your exchange server. Having a compromised exchange server is uh, certainly going to impact your business more. And the second patch that patches an actively exploited vulnerability today comes from Google. Google updated Google Chrome with an update that fixes a large number of vulnerabilities actually, but one in particular, CVE 2021-21166, was already exploited in the wild with Google Chrome pretty much updating itself. Just make sure you occasionally actually exit uh, Google Chrome to allow it uh, to update. Well, and with new exploits for uh, Google and Microsoft, Apple doesn't really want to be left behind. We have a new jailbreak that works for all iOS versions up to 14.3. Of course, 14.4 is the latest and greatest. It is not affected. The vulnerability being exploited here is 2021-17.82. Of course, the risk with these jailbreak vulnerabilities is usually that an attacker who has physical access to a phone could modify the phone software and install additional unauthorized software. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening. And I notified Mike, the winner of the February Raspberry Pi contest. So congratulations. And just as a reminder, if you find any errors, uh, just uh, send an email or uh, contact us via our contact page. It's probably the best way of doing it. And uh, that enters you into uh, the contest for this Raspberry Pi drawing. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.